Everybody come to worship our God on this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Simple put worship song. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands in adoration right there? Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way in this place. The song is simple. It simply says, I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. Come on, help me sing it. Sing, I love you forever. Come on, help us sing it. I love you Worship and adore him on today. Forever, here we go. Say, I love you, yeah, forever. 
for the rest of my life. Listen, he reigns. Ooh, he reigns. Hey, he reigns. Oh, forever and ever. He reigns. He reigns. He Give him a big praise. He's better than great. He's better than great. Yeah. He's greatly to be praised. Can't nobody do it like she. Can't nobody hold me like he can. And that's why I love you forever. Yeah. Somebody give God some praise if you're thankful. I'm so grateful. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Oh, somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Straight worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, some of y'all need to slip up both hands because God has been so good to you. look back over my life I could think of several times when I could have easily been dead not even not even an illness come on you remember that party you was at when they started shooting? Maybe it's just me. You remember the red light you were at and you was about to go? But something stopped you and a car blew through the light. And you just sat there. giving us yet another day. We thank you for giving us an opportunity to lift our hands, an opportunity to say thank you, an opportunity to visit with family and loved ones and come together as one body to celebrate you. Lord, we ask that you would have your way in this place today. For I know and understand that this has nothing to do with me. But this moment is all about you. So open our hearts. Open our minds, our spirits. That we can receive today what you have for us. Some are seeking, some are knocking. Many have questions. So speak to our hearts today that we'll know without a shadow of a doubt we've had an experience with a man named Jesus. Hallelujah in this place. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, clap those hands. Come on, thank God for this anointed music ministry. Hallelujah. Mike, kind of work with me on the sound 
real echoey up here. I don't, I don't know what y'all hear out there. You know, I used to get upset about microphone trouble, air conditioning trouble. But I know when all of that little stuff starts to happen, the enemy just doesn't want the word to go forth. So that's when you have to press even harder. Hey Amen. We apologize for the air conditioner situation. We got here at 4 o'clock this morning and cut it on. But it must be something else going on with it. But this week we'll have it squared away for you. Amen. Amen. I know I've been hot in a lot of situations. But I stayed. And had a good time. Amen. 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 Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. While you're finding your Bibles, your phone. Come on. Thank God for the angel of this house, our senior pastor and teacher. Thank God for him. Amen. He has a busy, busy week traveling and just resting up today. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for that. I don't know if you understand this or not, but pastoring is very difficult very difficult. It's, it's draining. It's a constant pull on you. It's not just taking care of a couple of people. It's taking care of thousands of people. And everybody wants to see you. They want to see the pastor. Amen? They want the pastor to do their mom's funeral. Marry them. Counsel them. Come see about them. And it's, it's a lot and on top of that, you have a family, you have bills, you have responsibilities. Sometimes you don't feel well, but you're still pressing. Make sure everybody's okay. But every now and then, you got to take a break. Amen. And then they want you to have something to say. <laughs> Come Sunday and Thursday. Amen. All right, grab your Bibles. Go with me. Go with me to Acts, the 12th chapter. I promise I'm not going to keep you long today. I know it's a little warm. We're going to get out of here. Amen? One of the hottest days of the year. Amen? I don't know about y'all, but man, it has been hot. It has been hot. But hey, thank God for air conditioning, you know? Simple things. Running water able to cool off whatever we can do to be comfortable. God has allowed us to be able to do that, and that's a blessing. Look at Acts 12 chapter. Before I get there, I want to give you a little history about what was going on. In Israel, they were experiencing what's called the Passover, a seven-day holiday the Feast of Unleavened Bread with, with the first and the last days were celebrated as legal holidays. Kind of what we do here for Christmas and Thanksgiving and all of that. So I want to kind of paint a picture of what was going on here in this particular text. They would even cook food and they would have special prayer services. But the land was being ruled by King Herod. And he wasn't such a nice fella. Fact about it, he, he had already murdered some Christians. He, he didn't want you to say anything about Jesus. And you see how good we have it. We can come in here and lift up hands and nobody's trying to put us out or, or hurt us. And, and we, we can freely worship the Lord. But at this time, it, it wasn't so. The king was violent against the church. Herod had already killed James, the brother of John, by the sword. And let's pick it up here in Acts, the 12th chapter. Let's look at the fifth verse. Watch it. It says, so Peter was kept in prison. They didn't like what he had to say to the people, getting the people riled up about Jesus. But prayer, listen, for him was being made fervently by the church of God. 
on that very night, Herod was about to bring him forward. Peter was sleeping, watch it, between two soldiers bound with two chains and guards in front of the door and watching over the prison. Peter, Peter was given, rather he was arrested. You can have your seats. And he was about to be presented in front of the people for his sentencing. Fact about it, he probably would receive a death sentence. All because of his good work trying to help people, trying to spread the gospel, he found himself in bondage. Jump on this train quickly because I promise I won't be for you long. Watch this. Saints of God, we're living in, in, in troubled times. A lot of crazy stuff going on. People just don't value life like they used to. When I grew up, of course, we had our share of trouble. But we had fist fights and maybe an occasional bat or brick or <laughs> something. But nowadays, it's a whole different ball game. You have people that would go into a grocery store and shoot everybody in sight just because they're a different color than you. And even have the audacity when he shot one of his own race says, oops, I'm sorry. People will go into a school and, and try to assassinate and kill our babies. What, what kind of a world are we living in? And, and on top of that, prices on everything seems to be on the rise. Gas prices at an all-time high. Food is at an all-time high. What you used to get, I remember when mama made $100 worth of grocery, we had some food. We had milk, meat, everything we needed. Fact about it, sometimes we were pushing and pulling two baskets for $100. Now you can get $100 worth of snacks for the kid. It, 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 it's, a, it's a different world that we're living in. And, and I, I want to help you today. I want to help you. Let, let's, let's unfold this text so I can get out of your way. Watch this, watch this. Peter finds himself in prison surrounded by God's shackle. It looks like there was no chance of getting out. You see, what, what frustrates you is when you know that the Lord has shown you something but it seems as though we're shackled. Maybe it's just me. But it, it's frustrating when you know that the Lord has showed you a particular thing that he wants you to do or something that he's told you that's going to happen. But for some strange reason, you just can't figure out how to get it done. That's frustrating. Watch it. He told you to plant the business, but you can't seem to find the right person to help you. He's told you to go back to school, but it just can't seem to come together because now you're married, you have kids, you have responsibilities, but, but school is on your mind, but it seems like you just can't get it done. Come on, help me preach in this hot church. I, I know I'm not the only one that sometimes wonder, Lord, what is it that I'm really supposed to be doing? Because right about now, it seems like I'm just spending my will. Seems like I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul, and I'm looking for all the rest of them jokers that can help me out. Right 
living in some crazy times. But call me old-fashioned if you want to. But I still believe that prayer works. Anybody in agreement with me in this house? So let's talk about it this morning. Prayer still works. Come on, say it with me. Prayer still works. I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness that prayer still works. Watch this. Watch this. So, preacher, I hear you talking, but, 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 but I feel as though I'm in prison. I'm not in prison, but I feel like I'm in prison. I'm not shackled, but I feel like I'm shackled. It feels like my finances are shackled. It feels like my marriage is shackled. It feels like my relationship with my children. Come on, somebody. Let's have a real talk this morning. Sometimes in life, I feel as though I am shackled. Doctor's telling me all of this different stuff that he says is wrong with me. She says it's wrong with me. I'm eating right. Trying to exercise. But when I go back to get my results, I feel as though I am shackled. Somebody shout, Lord, help. Lord, help. Watch it. Watch it. Number one, how, how do we get out of this prison state, this prison feeling. Watch this. Number one, be consistent. Watch it in your prayer life. Be consistent in your prayer life. I I'll make it plain for you. Look at, look at verse 5. It says, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. By the church. So how can we change our communities? How can we change our own life? Number one, be consistent in your prayer life. When Peter was in prison, the church, somebody say the church, not outsiders. The church was consistent in their prayer life. A lot of people don't want to pray. A lot of people don't want to spend time with them. We call a prayer meeting, maybe five or six will show up. But everybody wants results. I know what I'm talking about. Been churching for a long time. I remember prayer meeting was at different people's houses when I was little. And sometimes we'll be out praying in the yard and People like Sister Martha Henderson and Mary Donaldson, Doretha Claymore, and all of them were, were praying. The church was praying. Be consistent in your prayer life. Number two, watch this. I won't be long. Musicians, get ready. I won't be long. Watch this. Expect the unexpected. What are you talking about? Not, not anything negative. I know sometimes when I say that, you automatically go to something that's going to come against you. No, I'm expecting great things to happen for me. Come on, flip the script. I'm not expecting trouble, people coming against me. I'm expecting favor to take over my life. I'm expecting blessings, blessings, blessings to come my way in the name of Jesus. What are you expecting? Are you expecting trouble to rise up against you or blessings to run you down? Watch this. Watch this. Six. Verse six says, we're going to read a little bit here. It says, on the very night when Herod was about to bring him forward, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. Guards in front of the door. Watching over the prison. Hallelujah. Watch this. And behold, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared 
and a light shone in the cell. And he struck Peter's side and woke him up saying, get up quickly. Why, that thing can happen quicker than you think. Watch it, watch it. You better catch it in the spirit. And his chains fell off. And an angel said to him, gird yourselves, get dressed, man, put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and continued to follow. And he did not know what was being done by the angel was real. He thought he was dreaming. But he thought he was seeing a vision. And when they passed the first and second guard, watch this, that represents problems, issues that pop up. But when we follow what Jesus says, he'll allow us to walk by what's supposed to stop us. See, you're not catching it in the spirit. The Bible said he passed by the first and the second guard. And they came, watch this, to an iron gate that leads into the city. Now, I know that's supposed to stop you, right? Oh, we got by the first guard, the second guard. Now we got a gate. Oh, Lord. Lord, I know they're coming. I know they're coming. I know they're going to catch us. Lord, we done got out of the cell. They catch us. They're going to kill us. Are you expecting that? Are you expecting trouble to run you down, track you down, people to be negative and all of that different stuff? Are you expecting favor? Watch it. Which opened by itself. And they went out and went along one street. And immediately the angel departed from him. When Peter came to himself, he said, now... I know for sure that the Lord has sent forth his angel to rescue me from the hand of Herod and from all the Jewish people were expecting. They were expecting. They were expecting negative things to happen to him. They were expecting him to be brought before the people. What are we expecting? Listen, I don't know about you. I've said this time and time again. I expect God's favor to follow me everywhere I go. I expect to be bumped up the first class. I do. I expect favor when I go to a car lot. I expect favor when I go to a restaurant. That's why sometimes when I go somewhere and eat, sometimes they say, don't worry about it. Somebody's already paid for it. And I look around, I can't find nobody. Simply say, thank you, Jesus. Went to Chick-fil-A a little while ago on college driving and got to the window giving them my credit card. And they say, the car in front of you already paid for it. And that's how I live my life. I expect blessings. I expect people to treat me nice. I don't expect trouble. I expect God's favor to strike me down. I expect the x-ray to be clear. I expect all my numbers to be right. Blood glucose, blood pressure. I don't go in there worrying, oh, Lord Jesus. I remember, I remember when the Lord healed me from cancer and I had to get a checkup every year and that was scary because you were always wondering, oh Lord, sitting in that rocking and oh that mercy, he'll come in and say everything look good, whoo, <laughs> another year, go by, same thing. I did that for three or four years. I said, man, you know what? I'm not, I'm not worrying anymore. I'm not fretting over this anymore. Lord, I know it's already done, so I'll go in there now. Man, I'm not worrying about it. 
I know God has healed me. He didn't heal me just for a few years and would have me worrying and all of that stuff. Come on, it's been about 35 years. Hallelujah. And when I go in there, I am still not worrying about it. God, I thank you. I know you got it. I'm not worrying about it. Know you have bills and responsibilities and all that different stuff trying to feed the children and all this different crazy stuff going on. People downsizing, laying off and all of that. Listen, don't worry about it. Trust God and keep it moving. Number one, we've got to spend time with him. Have a set-aside prayer life. Be consistent in our prayer life. Expect the unexpected. I expect God to move for me. Hallelujah. Watch this. And last but not least, I want to end this thing with a question. Who's praying for you? Come on, nudge your neighbors. Ask them, who's praying for you? That's a serious question. Come on, aggravate them again. Wake them up. Ask them, who's on your team? Who's on your team? Come on, watch this. 12 says, and when he realized this, he went to the house of Mary. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. The mother of John, who was also called Mark, where they had gathered and were, what? Praying. 13 says, when he knocked at the door of the gate, a servant girl, Rhoda, came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice, because of her joy, she did not open the gate. Hallelujah. Boy, that's, that's enough to celebrate right there. And ran in and announced that Peter was standing at the gate. Why? Because they were consistent with their prayer life. They expected God to move. Watch it. 15 says, they said to her, you are out of your mind. Watch it. Come on. Come on. Ed. But she kept insisting that it was so. Come on. Say it. It is so. They kept saying it's an angel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door, they saw him and were amazed. I told you we wouldn't be long. Listen, even those that are watching online, television, we serve an amazing God. Listen to me. We serve a God that can break bondages. Not just saying this, I'm, I'm telling you what I know. We serve a God that can make crooked places straight. Come on, catch this in the spirit. We serve a God that can make rivers in the desert, even in your dry place. Somebody need to shout right there because you're ready to throw in the towel. 
You done been through so much, you don't know where you are right now. You, you've been in, you've been out, you're wondering what's going on. One minute you're you on fire for Jesus, the next minute you, you, you feel weak and feeble and all this stuff. God sent this little boy from Scotland here to tell you that he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above whatever you can ask or think. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, watch this, watch this. You can catch this if you want to. But I believe that the Lord is going to bless you in such a way that people won't recognize you. You'll be at the gate knocking. That can't be Brenda. That can't be binding because the last time I saw her, she was tore up from the floor. Up. But somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, give him an advance praise. You can't wait till the battle's over. Oh, you had it, can it? You got to learn to shout before it even happens. Come on, you got to drive it before you driving it. You got to walk in it before you walk in it. I'm telling you, he's a healer. He's a healer. Whoever in here, you, you've got a bad report. He's a healer. I'm telling you, the doctors walked away from me. 1999 said, that's it. He won't make it through the night. But that enemy didn't know. I had some folk on my team. When I was too sick to pray for myself, my teammates say, huddle up, huddle up, huddle up. My family say, huddle up, huddle up. And we're going to call the play. I want you to pray over here. I want you to pray over here. I want you to stay right here. And we all going to get to the end zone together. I don't know where that came from. But they began to see God. They didn't worry about who was at the hospital, who saw them. They said, you can say whatever you want. But God is about to move in this place tonight. Oh, and about two weeks later, I woke up. What in the world going on here? They say, well, you've been out for a couple of weeks. But while you were out, we were praying. And God with his awesome self began to touch you. And some stuff began to come together. Man, I said I was going to come in here and just talk to y'all. Oh, glory to God. And if he did it for me, he can do the same thing for you. Maybe you're not physically sick, but your checkbook is. If I be not a man of God, God can add some zeros to that checkbook. Folk will begin to see you riding and living and eating and vacationing like never before. Is that Montgomery? I got to go. I got to go. But before I go, I know they got two or three of y'all in here believing God for something. And it ain't just no little something. You need God to move. Fact about it, if God doesn't do it, it can't get done. So I need you to begin to talk to him. 
and not begging, but begin to thank him for it. And you watch God move in your life. Come on, begin to talk to him right now. God, I thank you for my healing. God, I thank you for my deliverance. I'm tired of drinking. I'm tired of drugging and smoking and living any kind of way. I'm tired of my children disrespecting me. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Thank you for favor. A favor that's on my life. I thank you that I'm healed. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Whole, I'm healthy. Hallelujah. I'm free from all manner of sickness and disease. Fact about it, I cast it out of me right now in the name of Jesus. I feel good. I look good. I don't even look like what I've been through. I've been through the fire. I've been through the flood. But I don't look like what I've been through. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for these, your people. Thank you for moving on their behalf right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for financial breakthroughs. I thank you for healing from addictions. I thank you for a peaceful, loving home. I thank you for fixing their marriages, broken relationships. I thank you for mending them right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for more than enough. Financially, running over. Oh, running over. Can you see that? More than enough. Thank you for retirement. Thank you for removing the spirit of worry. Thank you for freeing somebody right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for freeing every troubled mind. I thank you for allowing that one that feels less than to understand that they're fearfully and wonderfully made. In other words, when you made them, you took your time on them. Walk in who you are. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, if you know that you know that you know. Come on, praise God in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Come on, you may be seated. Hallelujah. God is so awesome. Such an awesome God. Hallelujah. Listen, we want to make an appeal. We want to make sure before we leave here today that everyone has a relationship with the Lord. Listen, man, I'm telling you, time is winding up. Can't play with this thing. Young man right here on the corner. I used to talk to all the time. Just found out, had heard about the murder right here on the corner a few weeks ago. I just found out it was him. Mm -hmm. 
may have been 20. I'm not sure. Man, time is, is winding up. You got to know Jesus for yourself. That's, a, that's, a, that's as plain as I can put it. We got to have relationship. You can't, can't, can't say, well, Big Mama prays all the time and Mama prays. No, you have to have relationship. Consistent prayer life. So today, if you don't have a relationship with the Lord, we're going to ask you to come. Listen, we're going to make you real comfortable. We're not going to ask you to say anything. We're going to love on you, pray for you. If you don't know 100% that you're saved, that if the Lord comes this evening, you're not sure if you will go with him or not. We need to be certain. We're going to ask you to come. And perhaps you had a relationship with the Lord, but for some reason you just kind of slowly drifted away. That's no problem. That's no problem. Listen, you simply backslid, but the Lord stands there with his arms wide open. He's not taking score and saying, oh, she did this or did that. No, he gives us chance after chance after chance. You're looking at somebody that has blown it many times. The Lord gives us chance after chance. If that's you, come. Or perhaps, hey, hey, man, hey, man, hallelujah. Hey, man, brother. Hallelujah. Oh, boy, it just does something to me when a young man comes. My God. Hallelujah. Bless you, man. Bless you, brother. Listen. Hallelujah. Woo. Come on, there's another. Come, 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 come. And last but not least, maybe you've been searching for a church home. You've been visiting church home, and you feel that peace here at Rose Hill. This place feels like home to you. Listen, we would love to have you. Listen, there's so much for us to do, and we have sense enough to know that we can't do it by ourselves. Those of us that work behind the scenes, man, we work hard. We need help. Amen. Listen, if that's you, come. Come. You could be a missing piece to this big puzzle that we're putting together. Amen. Come. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Family. Hallelujah. Come on, flowing. Flowing from my heart are the issues, are the issues of my heart. Come on, it's still time, it's still time. Flowing. the issues are the issues of my heart. Come on, it's faithful. It's faithful Amen. Come on, family, let's thank God for those that have come. Hallelujah. What a blessing. What a blessing. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. Hallelujah. Well, on behalf of our senior pastor and teacher, Lady Shawman and the entire Rose Hill family, we just want to say welcome. We thank God for you. Amen. Bless you, bless you, bless you, my sister, that you were bold enough to come. Amen. We thank God for you. Our leaders are going to take you to the back and, and meet your every need and pray for you. Amen. Come on, make them feel welcome. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, it's giving time. Let's get excited to give this, evening, this morning, rather. I got to get you out of here. The Lord began to move, man, I tell you. I tell you, I plan to preach about 15 minutes and get out of here. <laughs> but God, but God. Amen. Listen, here at Rose Hill, we make it simple for you when it comes to giving. You can text to give. It's probably our most popular way to give. 
simply text in 84321 up top and in the message box simply put the dollar sign and the amount you want to give hit send and it will take care of you from there just if it's your first time doing that it'll send you some information that you need to fill out or you're welcome to go to our website rosehillchurch.org and give that way or you can grab an envelope right there in front of you and give that way amen listen don't forget that we're right in the midst of our building fund and we need everyone to participate amen can we all do that so listen if you don't have a pledge card we're all pledging toward our building amen so when you make your pledge it's going to be over a 24 month period you don't have to give it all at one time you can divide it out over 24 months. You can do it every week, every two weeks, once a month. Or for you big ballers, just pay it off. Amen? Amen. So we thank God for you, or those that have given already. And for those that haven't gotten on board, come on, join forces with us because the bank will honor our pledge. Amen? The pledge is just like having money. They see that and say, okay, Rose Hill, they're all on board. Amen? So we'll, we'll be in good shape that way, okay? All right, all right. Our ushers are ready to go. You are now under the direction of our ushers, and we'll be right back with a couple of announcements, and we'll be out of here. Hey man, a couple of brief announcements and we'll be out of here. Listen, we have recap. That's our Bible study every Thursday at 7 p.m. We're going to ask that everyone, come on, come on out and join us for recap. I promise you, you'll have a wonderful time. So we look forward to seeing you. Amen. Amen. And also, please remember that we have youth service for this service every Sunday. So while you're in here, your young people can be getting fed there in the back and unfortunately we have some sad news one of our brothers our dear brothers brother Shelton Coleman went home to be with the Lord this past Friday awesome brother used to see him out in the parking lot sometimes um, he would help cook for all of our outreach ministries working with brother Dexter and everyone so he went home to be with the Lord so let's keep the Coleman family lifted up in prayer amen Hey, man, come on, stand to your feet. Give your neighbor a pound. Tell him it's good to see you this morning. Hope to see you right back here next Sunday or Thursday afternoon. Hey, man, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this awesome day that you blessed us with. Now, as we leave this place, but never your presence, we thank you for your traveling grace. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.